Welcome back you guys. Let's get you set up with your technologies, materials, and parameters. Any of this can be customized however you'd like, uh, but let's just assume that you do something fairly common. If you do, you'll likely already find your various options here. Uh, so let's assume we're doing FDM or you could change it to FFF or whatever you'd like to call it. And uh, sure, let's say we offer these three materials. Um, let's do something more advanced. Let's say we also offer this uh, or this. Okay, this is a good one. You see this hide from customers button? Let's say that old time, that's just, that's so complex. You only want to use that every once in a while. You don't want your customers or your clients or coworkers or whatever. You only want your team right there uh, to be able to choose this material. Otherwise, everyone's going to choose Ultim, even when they don't need it, and you just want to hide it from people. Great. So you can do that. You can hide from your customers. Um, let's go into each one. Uh, not each one, but let's just go into one. Uh, this right here, this little tooltip description, that'll show up when people hover over the material. So change that to whatever you'd like. And this is really cool, particularly for FDM. You can set your min and max temps. Uh, that'll come into play later when you upload job files like G codes or 3MFs. So if you upload a G code uh, for a PLA part, um, our software knows what a G code is and it's going to look at that G code and it's going to go, oh wow, hey, uh, you sliced this at 260 degrees. Are you sure that this is a PLA part? Since you know the max temp is 220. And you can tell it, yes, go for it, fine, it's fine. But it's just a cool little feature. Uh, you don't have to use it, but it could help you uh, prevent mistakes from happening. All right, so that's a technology, that's a material. Anything that is not one of these two things is one of these, a property. Um, you can make whatever you want, but obviously like infill, layer height, nozzle size, maybe you wanna make number of perimeter walls as something that is shown here. Uh, maybe you want to have the various infill types, gyroid, honeycomb, etc. Uh, something that we do is we call out the build tray. Are you going to use a textured or a smooth tray? So annoying not to know which one I'm supposed to use. Okay, cool. Um, and once again, uh, I cannot stress enough how you might want to decide, can your clients view this? Uh, or can your clients, when there's more than one option, edit this? So can they view it? Can they see all the infill options? And then are you going to actually let them choose which one, or are you going to leave that to you and your team? Uh, that will definitely help you um, from getting requests for things that are simply overkill and so forth. Um, okay, great. So we did that. Let's uh, add some SLA materials. Now, when you click that, it'll open up whatever window you had most recently. So here it went to properties. That's because I was in here looking around before I hit record, trying to delete a bunch of stuff, just trying to get it to where we can start from scratch. So usually when you click that, it's gonna show the materials thing. I'm not gonna go back and edit that out. I'm just letting you know. Okay, um, I don't know. Let's go with, let's just go with these two for now. And let's now go into our technology specific properties. So let's say that we only want to give people these two options for layer height and standard, polished, and supreme clear are the various finishing options that we want to give to people. Great. Let's go. Now, you might be thinking, wait a second, back to the materials. Do I really want to let people choose supreme clear for a material that is not clear, you don't. Uh, so here, let me go ahead and delete this. Let's pretend this didn't exist. I filled this out too much. Uh, you can choose now for each material the various compatible finishing options. And so here, takes a little time, but you would just go in and you would only select what you want for those materials, standard and polished. And then here, again, takes some time, but you only have to set this up once, right? Uh, and oops, clicked the wrong thing. As you can see, I already set up standard, polished, and supreme clear as the options for this material. Okay, cool. Um, should we add more materials or let's just, for the sake of time, let's just 
go with it. Um, maybe add just something else so we can see what's going on. Great. Default printing settings. See how it says required? That's because it is. This is just like, um, basically when you drag and drop a file into the software, it needs to start somewhere. So it's just going to start with whatever you choose here. If you're me, the person narrating this video, then you, you print a lot of this. You print a lot of black PLA at that end, fill layer height and nozzle. Cool. Um, so that's just sort of like your, your default. Great. We're all set up. Maybe. Um, so let's go ahead and this is like what the staff side looks like. This is different than what your customers or clients would see, but let's create a new project and let's go ahead and drop in some STL files. Now we don't have to use STL files. We could use SOLIDWORKS files. We could use STEP files. You could use any common 3D format. Um, it will convert it to a mesh if it is not already a mesh. And then over here in the version history, that's where you can find the original native file like the SOLIDWORKS file or whatever it might be. Now, you'll notice that it defaulted to those settings that I just set up as the default settings. But in reality, this is going to be a gray SLA part. We have limited the layer heights to these two options and we have limited the finishing to these two options. But if we were to choose Acura clear view, uh-huh, cool. And there it is, Supreme Clear, which will only show up for that specific material. Awesome. Okay, you guys, well, thank you so much for learning with me, and we'll see you in the next video.